Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I want to talk about throwing in armor, specifically the difficulty in doing so, and the ways in which traditional sort of wrestling or judo techniques do and don't translate to armored hema. So obviously, whenever we're talking about armored hema, we're talking about people wearing sometimes 40 to 60 pounds of metal on their body. And for obvious reason, that makes things very, very difficult. You often can't see, you can't hear, you can't breathe very well, and you're now 60 pounds heavier than you were before. So cardio usually goes out the window. But specific to throws and wrestling, I think a lot of people don't appreciate how much that weight and specifically where it is positioned on your body makes such a huge difference. I think a lot of people, especially when they read some of the sources about Armored Hema, think, oh, well, it's just grappling. Because when there's two people who are armored up and the armor does its job, there's not a lot of unprotected areas to hit. So what are you going to do if not try to put the other person on the ground and hold them there so that you can hit those areas? And that certainly comes up a lot. But what doesn't come up is specifically how different the throws have to be set up and specifically how your particular points of balance and weight distribution changes so that certain traditional, really, really effective methods of getting people to the ground no longer work. So we're going to watch this exchange here where a grapple ensues. But as they basically both grab each other's weapons and right about here, you see this person is going for just a typical hip toss judo Uchimata kind of deal. An inside leg reap where basically he's going to pull forward with his hands here, pulling the head towards his left, and throw his right leg back, pushing his hips and his opponent's weight out and away from his head, creating an imbalance where you essentially pull the weight of somebody's, pers uh, somebody's body forward while taking away the leg that they would traditionally use to catch that weight once it started to unbalance. And it's a classic throw. But you can see already here that things are already starting to go wrong. One is that thanks to the position that they're in, despite the fact that the hips are touching each other, it's really hard to get low enough to get your hips under someone else's in armor because you don't always have the exact same amount of range of motion. It's pretty difficult to quickly go in a kind of ass to grass squat position while in armor because your legs and more specifically the uh, front of whatever a chest armor you have might kind of embed into the top of your thighs. So often it, it's kind of hard to get that low. And most importantly, bending at the knees is going to be extremely difficult because all that extra weight up here is just planting your feet in a method that you probably don't want to be. And because you can't be nimble, moving your feet around and repositioning your weight exactly where it wants to, it's really, really common and likely that your feet are going to get left behind. And you're going to start throwing your weight into your opponent like this person is doing without their feet perfectly under them in the most structured way, which means the second they go for this throw, they immediately fall over. And that's because if you go back and watch it again here, what you clearly see is as this throw is getting set up, you see the legs are in great position. The knees of your opponent aren't exactly too open. But right as the point comes where, you know, this leg is set up, um, when the position of this leg starts to move, look where the weight shift happens. The leg moves, but the weight doesn't go anywhere because it's just so much to move. There's so much weight right here, right on this leg that when he tries to move his left leg to get a better position to execute the throw, his leg just caves under him because it can't handle that weight. It's hard enough to basically wrestle on one leg, but most people who do wrestling enough will know that actually most wrestling happens. Most good, this style wrestling at the very least, happens on one leg because at the end of the day, your leg is a limb that's extremely effective at moving and unbalancing other people and having it available to have essentially three limbs to attack with, two arms and one leg, is way better than having to have both feet planted. But in this case, it doesn't work out. But what you'll see is that despite the fact that uh, this person is now basically been put into a dominant position because their opponent fell over, they still can't really capitalize. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is that whenever you're grappling in armor, plates have this really bad tendency to kind of get stuck to each other. Basically, 
uh, if this was a regular wrestling hold, getting out of this would be trivial. You could pretty much just rear up your lower back and raise your head up as hard as you can, and nobody's one single arm is going to be able to hold you down. But because I believe the gauntlets have something to hold on to in the chest plate, the head plate, the, the pauldrons, whatever, you can really get a good grip. And even unintentionally, parts of your plates might get stuck into theirs, which means as soon as this happens, it's pretty easy for him to just pull this person down and forward. And the other reason this was so easy is not only because the plates sort of lock together, but because another aspect that putting all this armor on you does, which is it raises your center of balance extremely high. Uh, some of you may have done this in whatever your kids' karate classes or whatever, but there's a very fun experiment you can do, which is to plant yourself, lower your hips, and kind of make yourself quote-unquote unthrowable in the sense that lowering your center of gravity makes you exponentially more difficult to move because the only way you can move a person is by acting on their center of gravity. And the further you are from that point, and the further you are, you are from trying to act on their center of gravity, the harder it is to move them. So this person whose center of gravity is a little bit lower than theirs, and the other person who fell over, normally you would say, again, there's no reason why you should have really had to fall here. But again, being in armor raises your center of gravity quite a lot, almost to the point of the middle of your chest, which means actually right now, despite the fact that legs are under hips and you know one of them's trying to land, but right about here, he said, this is a perfectly normal position to be in. It would be pretty hard to drag someone down like this. You have to remember that actually their point of balance is here. And right now it is over both of their feet and it is pulling them forward with huge momentum. And because this person's leg is still out there, they're going to trip on it. And because they have nowhere to go, that momentum pulls them right forward and they fall over. The last thing I want to say about throws and specifically wrestling is that this is a position that most people would consider extraordinarily dominant for this person. Being on your hands and knees in any sort of wrestling format is just better than being on your side. None of your limbs are really on the ground except for your one elbow. But in armor, these are both still pretty bad positions to be in, specifically because, again, of the center of balance issue. When you're on your hands and knees and you're not in armor, you can pretty easily shift your weight back over your legs and free up your arms. The problem is, is that when that weight is significantly increased and your center of balance is higher, you have to go backwards way further over your own legs in order to get your center of balance under your legs again, which means that right about here, this person is basically trying to do a push-up with one arm, maybe two arms if they're pushing against their opponent, but their opponent still has their arm around the back of their head, which is actually pretty close to their center of gravity, which means they can't really rock backwards onto their knees in order to sit up, and they can't do a full push-up because, well, their arms are already fully extended and there's nowhere to go. So basically, there's no point of leverage here for this person to, stand, to sit up, stand up, do anything, and they just kind of get stuck. <laughs> they try to put their legs under them as best they can. And again, you see that that center of balance comes into play. The second they put their feet up here, look at where the balance is. It's still right here. And so the second these feet touch the ground, the momentum and the weight brings them right back forward again, and he falls right back down. So... That's going to be all for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to send me an email over at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com, and I hope to see you next time.